What's up, good people? So we finally cleared P3S. Uh, after a month of working hard, today I'm giving you the monk point of view for P3S, uh, for the P3S, P3S guide. So we're always gonna, you know, go for the double solar opener. It just gives us the most damage overall. Uh, the fight isn't too terrible. The first uh, first ability he's gonna use is Scorch, Scorch Exhaustion, which is just a really wide AOE. That one's pretty nice and simple. We're just vibing and having a good time. Um, heat condemnation condemnation as a monk we don't have to worry about too much about this pretty much what this is is this it's a double tether for the tanks we just stand behind the boss the party will stand behind the boss most of the fight just to make sure that we don't accidentally pull these tethers as a monk you just want to make sure that you're not inside the hitbox because sometimes you can steal the tether or either any dps any melee dps if you stand inside the hitbox you can accidentally steal the tether so make sure that you're not standing in that hitbox. You should be good to go on this mechanic. Pretty straightforward there. AOE, we just keeping our distance. <clears throat> and we're vibing. So as you see here, I'm trying to get some sneaky, some sneaky positionals. I'm trying to get some sneaky positionals. <laughs> but outside of that, he the, um, the boss will now start charging an ability called Elemental fire plume what well, either what's going to happen is this is also from normal where if if the boss has multiple um uh, multiple orbs around them he will do explosions around the outside of the map and then one big one in the middle if that's the case you want to move into the second explosion so he will drop he will drop three explosions on the outside one in the middle so it'll be like boom one boom two you run into that one there's a third one and then there's there's a center explosion so you, you should be safe there if he does one big explosion a big big daddy boom bow bang then we're gonna head towards a or towards north or pretty much towards the edge of the map as a party uh, for this first mechanic it's also easier just to head towards north if the boss is north because you would it, it will help you help you be able to dodge the second mechanic much easier when it comes up so since it's a big old fireball, we're heading towards A. We're going to get to the edge to make sure we dodge the mechanic. One important thing is to make sure that everybody's in the middle of the map for this mechanic when this mechanic goes off. Because what it does, if it is the big fireball like that, it will target one random person. And it will hit where that person was standing. So if everybody is crowded in the middle of the map, it will make sure that the fireball always hits the middle of the map so you can safely move to the edge. Just an FYI, just something for you to something for you to write down in your notepad. <laughs> the second big thing is right after that, he will do a wing mechanic. If we read the bottom here, it says right wing, cinder wing. So you want to, so the 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 direction that the wing says on the mechanic is where he would do the attack. So if we're looking at the boss, it's gonna be this 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 wing right here. If you're a person who likes to look at the way that the boss is, so I'm, I'm a person who likes to look where the boss is facing. So it's gonna be pretty much like the right wing of the bird. <laughs> We had this conversation in our group chat in our in our static about how to look at this bird. Um, I just remember that the the right this is the right wing, <laughs> this is the left wing. So if it says right wing or if it says depending on what what direction it says is which way the wing is gonna strike. So you just make sure you're on the safe half of the map because he will swipe the entire half of the map that the wing is said. <clears throat> For this mechanic coming up, I'm going to drop a quick diagram up here. It's called Dark and Fire. Um, essentially, it's going to, essentially, we all need to be on four of these boxes. So this should be four squares. Yoshi P made it super easy for us. So you can see I have a square here. Um, this is square here. That will be one here. And then there's one behind my head here. Well, how we do this is we set up kind of like a kind of set up like a, a tag team here because what happens either the fireball will target tanks and healers or the fire bar will target DPS. So we kind of have clock spots. So if, you, if you're used to clock spots, you would have like one tank north, one tank south, one healer east, one healer west, and then the DPS fills in the intercardinals. I always get those confused. Cardinals or intercardinals? I think it's the intercardinals is when they're, they're the northeast, southeast ones. Um, and then you're just gonna have tank and healers rotate one. So essentially on each square, there should be one tank, one DPS, uh, one DPS, one healer, one tank, one DPS, one DPS, one healer. So at the end of the day, you should have a pair of tanks and healers, tanks. You should have a pair of people who is with tanks and, and DPS. So it should be one DPS, one healer, one DPS, one tank, etc. Um, Once that happens, once the, once the fill gauge is full, 
these little cute little black fires will show up. If if you're too close to a black fire, they will tether and you will die. I mean, that, that's it. That's plain and simple. That's, that's exactly what happens to you. You will tether. They will tether. Your party will wipe and you will be back at the respawn <laughs> to do this again. And that's why it's important that we use those squares as our indicators to make sure that we get the distance correctly. This mechanic is a part two of the fire mechanic. What happens is each person will get a number on their head um, from one through eight. One through eight is your numbers. Uh, one through four, if we use these markers, you just have one through four placed on the corresponding marker. So we have marker one, two, three, four around the map. So if you have one through four, you just go to where the number is. If you have uh, five through eight, you will follow the same flow. So five will be at one, six will be at two, seven will be at three, and um, eight will be at four. You want to make sure there's two people on each stack and that you're right in the middle. Because if you can see by this AOE around my body, you can see where it's going to strike. And we want to make sure that each fire gets hit. I believe each fire has to get hit four times. So to make sure that works, we're standing right in the middle. To make sure that when we get attacked, that our fire gets hit. Both sides of the fire gets hit. Because once they get hit eight times, um, they become they 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 lose their invulnerability buff. And then we can kill them quickly. If they're not hit correctly, um, one fire will be invulnerable and it will wipe your party. So <laughs> make sure that you're in the appropriate spot right here in the middle. So your so your aura actually hits both both parts pretty both parts perfectly. If you're if as a monk, if you're smart, use your riddle of riddle of uh riddle of uh what? <laughs> Use your use your rule of earth so you don't take any damage. What is Jay? Well, do you, Jay, are you even a monk man, bro? Make sure you use your rule of earth so you don't take any damage, and that way, or take reduced damage. That way, that'll help out help help out your your healers a lot. And then you just want to make sure you burst down the fires, and you're good to go there. How we did for our party is we had our we burst down the fire clockwise, so we kept the fire to our left. Everybody kept the fires to the left, and we was perfectly good. This is another tank buster. We don't have to worry about anything here. We're just vibing. I'm, as a monk, also make sure you should choose north as much as possible in these fights so you don't accidentally kill anybody. This is raid wide. We're good. So you just want to make sure that um, that using true north because staying in the middle and staying with your party is actually really well. As you see, I'm I, when I get an opportunity, I come here and get a couple of uh, positionals off when I'm able to. Elemental fire plume is the either the the big fire or the multi fire. So we have the multi fire here for this mechanic. Um, he's going to see, he's going to split the map in fours and y'all have seen this before in normals. If you don't know, he's going to split the map in fours. What we always decided as a group was that we was going to go Northwest of the map. So as you can see here, we're, we're going to focus on moving in this direction. So how this works is if he does the big fire, we can immediately go here because we're going to want to stack because there will be a stack mechanic where we need to bait AOEs and then move out as a group. So everybody needs to kind of move in the same direction as pop if possible. If it is a multi-fire like the one we see here, let me go back a little bit. I'm going to go back just a little dab here. If it's a multi-fire like we see here, what we're going to need to do is time it to where we can safely enter the safe area. If the, the, the kind of the rule of thumb is if the first explosion hits north northwest first, then we can immediately move in that square, but move towards north. If the, the, the tricky one is when the explosion hits the safe zone second, because then you have to really time when to go. Because uh, if you go too late, you're going to get hit by the middle explosion. But if you go too early, you're going to get clipped. So that one, that was a little tricky, but just 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 try to uh, make that dying work. <laughs> so since it hit the first explosion, we're going to go straight in, but we're going to go towards A side so we don't get clipped over here. We're going to stack up tight as a group, bait the AOEs, and then move out of that beautifully and perfectly right afterwards he does the wing mechanic again so we're going to move to the safe side of the wing okay jay good job you worried me for a second and we're just going to keep vibing as a monk as a monk your burst window happens right here <laughs> you know your phantom rush into double uh pb into double perfect balance into brotherhood happens 
during that during that uh during that mechanic is super stressful <laughs> but if you can if you can just understand that like that is your buff time window that's that, that all that's going to happen then that kind of gives you an idea of what, when you need to make sure you, you're ready to go so a buff time window happens right there unfortunately <laughs> we just got tank tellers again as a monk, you know, the ball, you know, big is my main tank. He actually positioned the balls very well, so I can hit these positionals easy. He does the experimental plume again. We're going to go into the second explosion, like that right there, and we're good to go. Stay close to the edge. The next mechanic is a dive mechanic. So if you're looking at this face, right, <laughs> if you see two fires, right, if the outside heads are are glowing that means that it's gonna have to be a stack mechanic but y'all have a diagram up here for you you're gonna stack you're gonna essentially stack with the partner that you stacked with during your fire plumes that's how we did it during the 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 dark fire baits when we had to put them on the four squares so they wouldn't be too close we use the exact same partners for this dive part for this dive too so if it's, if the two outside heads are going you're gonna to want to stack in the middle because when the when the bird dives, it's going to wipe out anything on the outside of the map. So the middle is safe. And you wanna stack because the AoE will either target tanks and healers or will target DPS. It will target tanks and healers or will target DPS. So you wanna make sure that when you stack in pairs of two, that it's a soak stack. So you need at least two people to be able to the to be able to survive the mechanic. If the if the middle head was the only one that was glowing, it is a spread mechanic. <laughs> And we had all DPS go to the west side of the map, and all tanks and healers go to the east side of the map, spread accordingly, and that one is a lot more simple. Just make sure that you're not in the middle of the map, because when it is the middle head, the bird will wipe everything in the middle of the map, and it will push you straight to the wall. <laughs> so you want to make sure that, that you follow that mechanic correctly. Since there's two glowing heads, this is a stack. So me and my, me and my partner from the same fire mechanic are stacking here. This is our ad phase. The ad phase is kind of rough because for the ad phase, you have roughly, I think, 30 seconds to kill the birds. Um, for the first ad phase, for the second ad phase, I think you have about 22 seconds to kill all the birds. If you do not, you will wipe. Um, what happens here, as far as a monk, we don't have to worry about too much other than killing the birds. We have designated our light party. So we have light, we have light party groups, which would be one healer in each group, one tank in each group, and then two DPS. One, uh, one light party will move south with two birds. One light party will move north with two birds. Our goal is just to make sure we kill the birds. The tanks need to make sure they don't die on top of each other. So you would kill each bird, each, each, uh, each card, if I if I have those words correctly. So you would kill one bird north, one bird east, one bird south, and one bird west. One group would kill one bird north and one bird east. The second group would kill one bird south and one bird west. So if they're too close together, they will give a buff to the big bird, um, and then we will wipe and die because <laughs> we won't be able to survive the damage. During this time, healers just want to make sure they keep healing because we're taking consistent damage throughout this part. Um, as a monk, you're going to use your off, as a monk, you can use, you're going to have to use your off, your odd number. If you don't know what that is, I got a, I got a guide for you that explains what your odd number rotation is. That is when you just use one root of fire and one PB. You're going to want to use that here. So then when we go into the transition phase, you have your burst phase ready. So we're just killing the ass here. We, we're rotating them accordingly. Make sure they die in the correct spots. This is going to be a raid wide. What's important here is that these birds have about 22 seconds. So this is part two of your ad phase. These birds have about 22 seconds to die before they enrage and kill us. What we need to do is before the mechanic for this bird phase happens, we need to start. We need to progressively continue to hit a bird because it's important that we get these birds as low as possible. That's going to make it the easiest for us to kill the birds right after we do the mechanic. The mechanic that is coming up is that each bird. So either the bird would tether to a tank and healer or a DPS. The bird would tether to a tank. Now listen to me. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a little confusing. The bird would tether to a tank and healer and DPS, and that person who is tethered to the bird will tether to the opposite role. So, for instance, if the bird tethers to DPS, there will be a tank and healer that is tethered to a DPS player. 
So you have a, don't worry, I got a diagram I'll put for you. So if you have a bird that is tethered to DPS, all four DPS would be tethered to one bird. Each DPS would be tethered to a tank or a healer. What happens is whoever is tethered to a bird, which could also be tank and healer, they need to be on the opposite bird of the bird that they're tethered to. So say for instance, you're tethered, say for instance, we're here, right? And I'm, and say I'm tethered to a bird. Like, hey, I'm going to say A for this one. I would need to go all the way down to the opposite side of the map. So I'm tethered, I'm tethered to North Bird. I need to be at South Bird to be able to break the tether. And then the person who's tethered to me needs to be at my bird at, that I'm tethered to. So I will move to the South Bird. My partner will move to the North Bird that I'm tethered to. Because what happens is the bird will dive to me and then dive to them. So making sure that we have max distance from each other. If you do it perfectly, you should be at the opposite bird that you're tethered to. Like at the very opposite end. And your partner should be at the opposite at, at the bird that you are tethered to <laughs> if you do it perfectly you're at the furthest distance from your bird your partner is at right besides your bird <laughs> and it should work perfectly that way so so this one the tanks and healers are tethered to the bird i'm tethered to a tank or a healer so as we can see if you can I'm trying to get you a good angle here as you can see for instance um uh, here we go let's let's do this so my partner is tethered to this bird here so my partner is way up here i think my partner is is dj or it might be big my partner is tethered to this bird so he went to the opposite bird here since he's at this bird i have to come to his bird and as you see if everything's perfect these tethers become become really thin purple lines if not when they first come out, you can see how they have these weird look looking arrows. If you have a weird looking arrow, that means you're not far enough. So as you see, my partner is big. He's away from his bird. As I get away from big, my tether gets really thin. This is the perfect way to do it. It should have this cool looking star if you've done it correctly. Whoever's tethered to the bird, when you get hit, you have to immediately move out the way because the hitbox in this bird is pretty massive. And it will kill you on its way back to hit hit the partner. So as you can see, the the healers are moving, the tanks are moving. Big moved over, he got hit, he moved out the way. Uh, Frenchie got hit, she moved out the way. Aloon got hit, moved out the way. Ice Cream got hit, moved out the. Uh, Mayor got hit, moved out the way. So everybody took one big step over. The birds don't hit. The birds dodge them on the way back, and then it hits the DPS. If this was in reverse, the DPS would get hit first. The DPS would need to move, and then it would hit the tanks and healers. Now the goal is that we just need to kill these birds before they enrage, and we need to make sure that we kill them in the same thing. They need to be spaced out. One bird needs to die south, one bird needs to die west, one bird needs to die east, and one bird needs to die north. If they die too close together, it's going to give Big Daddy Bird a damage buff, and when he does his AoE, we, we will wipe. That's why it's super important to make sure that we damage the birds during that mechanic to make sure that we can get max damage. That we can that we can that we can um that we can soften them up as much as possible. Big AoE, make sure you use your mitigations here. This will be our second burst phase. Our double Phoenix, our double, our double, you know, double Phoenix into a double PB, into Brotherhood, Real Fire. This is when you're gonna use that. This is also a good pot. Rotation. This is why we used our odd rotation during the ad phase, so we can have this up to be able to do our full burst rotation during this downtime. Dead rebirth is just another AOE. Just use your mitigations. It's just a, it, uh, it hurts a lot, so you want to use me yes as possible. If you're smart and not like Jay, you would have used real of Earth here, <laughs> but you but you did not because you was too worried about your burst phase, which is completely fine. We're going back into tank th tethers here. We're pretty much vibing. Just let, just trust that your that your tank is gonna grab that tail off you, like I did. I'm just focused on my damage. The next mechanic that is coming up, um, and I I don't know what you call them. I'm gonna call them arrows. <laughs> I'm gonna call them arrows. They're called fledging. The mechanics called fledging. I call them arrows. They will either pop up on tanks and healers, or they will pop up on DPS. What happens is this mechanic is pretty simple. If you get a, if you get if you get one of these bad boys on your head here. As you can see, it's going to have an arrow pointing. You just want to point the arrow away from the party. So how it should look is that there should be a north arrow, east arrow, south arrow, west arrow. And you just point them in the direction that they're pointing. So you would move. So 
So a north arrow, we use these markers as to help would be at one, a east arrow would be at two, south arrow would be at three. And then, so what happens is they shoot these cone blasts and then the party will stand in the middle to make sure we don't take any damage. As you can see, everybody's moving towards the outside. I'm getting my last few positionals and then everybody gets to the middle to make sure we don't get hit by any of the, any of the blasts. Pretty straight simple. That one's a pretty easy vibe. Um, the next one that's coming up, and also from here on out, that both this this isn't something needed for the monks, but both tanks are taking um, both tanks are taking uh, damage throughout this fight. Both tanks are being auto attacked throughout the fight. Oh, uh, so if either one of them die, you you will die next. <laughs> just a, just a little FYI, if any of your tanks die and you're doing the top damage, you will die next. It's just I just you just can't live. It's just I've, I've it happened to me quite a few times. The next one that's coming up is double fire. So he's gonna do the regular fight, the regular fire where he's gonna do um this first one where he does the he always does the multiple the this move into the second explosion. He always does that in this phase. And he's gonna do a second uh second fire that's gonna be a black fire. If it is um if the black fire is one big black fire you would need to stack you have to have a different light party for this one so you're actually going to have two light parties in this mechanic in this fight the second light party is important because what happens is unlike your normal light parties it won't tap it's not going to target two healers what it's going to do is going to target one healer and one one dp on um, one tank so how you have to break this party up is that you need to have two you need to have two tanks and two range dps in one party the reason we put range dps in a party together with the tanks is to keep uptime so the tanks can stay at the boss and the range uh the range dps can stay away from the boss <clears throat> and then you're going to have your two melees and your two healers in the second light party that way the two melees can keep their uptime if if they so desire <laughs> i think in this run i sacrificed my uptime just because i didn't want to accidentally kill anybody i can't remember and then the two healers would stay away so what happens is if it's a one big black uh fire um, you would need to stack with your party. If it is a multi-fire like you see here, but it's the black one, then you would need to spread from your party and, and absorb the damage that way. The best way to do the spread is that the melees will come in and stand in between the numbers. So like, so so one tank would be between one and two, uh, one melee would be between two and three, one melee would be between three and four, and the last tank would be between four and one. And then just make sure you're surrounding the boss that way all the ranges would just stay on the outside of the map and everything should be perfect so this one was actually a <clears throat> second explosion into a spread as you can see the black fire here comes the spread so as you see we're gonna wait till we see the second explosion we're gonna move into it we have predetermined spots so my safe my spot to play is over here between two and three um dj's a loon spot is right here between three or four so as you see i'm gonna run to second explosion and i pop my sprint so i can immediately start sprinting over i'm gonna dash in and perfect perfect good job jay <laughs> yeah good job jay i didn't know if I, I couldn't remember what happened here so i used my sprint to make sure i got out of everybody's way and then i dashed back in to make sure that i didn't kill anybody with my stack marker if it was the opposite and it was uh, one big black fireball, we would run into the second explosion and then we would stay there as a team. That that would be what that is. That would be a stack. We would stay there as a team. The mechanic would go off and then we can proceed to go as normal. <clears throat> now this mechanic, oh, oh, this mechanic. <laughs> it's similar to the ad mechanic where what you're going to see is there's going to be uh, two soak towers the healers we have to absorb the soak tower start the fight it gives them a hill of buff they'll be good to go so you don't have to worry about too much for that but for us we're, we're doing the tether mechanic again like we did with the first with the first birds so what's important for this fight is that how this works is we need to bait how the bird the order that the birds come down because it makes the mechanic so much easier so it does boss it does the distance to boss so what you do is you have the tanks in the middle of the bird so let's let's go back a little bit here so, so i can kind of like show you here all right so how this mechanic works is that you want to make sure we got the distance correctly so what happens is the the close the the first group of people who are closest to the bird will be tethered first what happens is then you have to take the tether to how the towers are, are dropping, the healer towers. This is going to be so confusing to explain. So there's there's four healer towers that drops. We need to bait our AoEs into fr each in front of each healer tower to make sure we don't kill anybody. So how this works is that 
we had the tanks stand the closest to the birds because they would get tethered together first. They will move in front of the first, in front of their corresponding healers um, puddle, the first corresponding healers puddle. The second group who needs to take the tethers would be melees. So we are standing the second furthest away from the bird. And then the last group who needs to take the tethers would be rangers. They're standing the furthest from the group, but inside of the healers. So if you can see here, the tanks are right up on, right on top of the bird. The two melees is me and Vin. So as you can see, I'm me and Vin are standing at the second furthest because he's baiting melee because he's playing dancer. So he's doing a fake melee. So he's baiting the melee tether. And then you see Sean. And then you see Ender here. That's, well, Ender's behind me. And there's a little, little cutie right here <laughs> who's standing the third furthest from the boss. So if this is perfect, we would get tethered accordingly. See there, there's the healer, there's the healer soaks. As you can see, the tanks get their tethers. They get their AOEs. They're going to go stand in front of the first tower to bait, to bait their birds to come down. The deep melees will get their second. If we did the distance correctly, we stand in front of the second tower to, to get the birds to come down. When the birds come down, you need to switch with your tethered partner. So this is back to like the ad phase. So as you can see, big dropped his bird here. Mayor dropped his bird here, and then they're going to switch spots so they don't get killed. As you can see, they're switching spots. The tether is broken, so now they won't get killed. The second group of people, wait to after the first group's tether, first group's bird goes through. It's not, if not, if you try to immediately run, you, you might get clipped and might get killed. So as you see, I wait for their mechanic to go off first, and then I proceed to cross over because I have to do the same thing while dodging the AoEs. Me and Vin switch places. We take the minimal damage, and then the rangers are doing the same thing. They're going to switch places at the third puddle and then take miss damage. Sean was a little too close to her bird, I believe. I believe that's why she died, or she might have got clipped by uh, her partner's bird. So y'all must make sure you're behind the bird. I think that's why Sean died there, but you just want to make sure that you completely switch spots. This is going to be a double AoE here, so we're just vibing. Right after the double AOE will be tethers. It's always good for the group to group back at three to make sure that we don't steal a tether here. This is a great LB3 uh, LB3 time to to use your LB3 if you're if we're trying to kill this bird because the because the kill window here is a little tight. Now we're going to technically the hardest mechanic <laughs> in the fight. One of the toughest mechanics in the fight. But we decided to use Elmo. If, if anybody knows what the Elmo shot is, that's the that's the shot we decided to use here. What happens is we go into this explosive transition. There are three tornadoes that will pop up around the map. I'm gonna, I got diagrams all through this video, so don't worry about it. Each, what we need to do is have people bait the tornadoes because they will shoot an AOE at the end of the mechanic. Um, and then we also have people bait the bird AOEs. <laughs> and I know this all sounds confusing, but the goal is for Elmo, what we have is actually, we're gonna have both tanks we're going to have both tanks bait both each tornado. They're going to use Invoom. So they're going to take the tank tank stack and they're going to bait the tornadoes. They're going to stand close to the tornadoes. They're going to Invoom them. And the entire party will stand at the C marker. And we will bait one AOE together. And then one range or a healer will bait the north tornado and shoot it outward, which will make sense as we get there. Uh, before that, we have to dodge pizza slices. So what pizza slices are is that three six pieces of slices will show up. As you can see, they came up in a certain order. This one came up first, this one came up second, and it's always the angle. So these two came up first, these two came up second, and then these two came up third, which means that what we need to do is stand in the third one and then move once once one of the other ones go off, we move and then there will be another black fire mechanic. So either, so once we dodge the piece of slice, we will either need to stack if it is one big fireball or we will need to spread if it's a multi fireball. Um, if that's the case, then just make sure you move accordingly. We, you know, ranges, healers will go, ranges will go back and then melees will stay up on the boss. So as we see, as soon as this first piece of slice disappears, so we can see that this is going to be a stack, big fire, big black fireball. First fire, first fire disappears. We run into it to keep ourselves safe. And then we stay stacked to make sure that we don't take the damage here. This is also, once again, this is light parties. This is the black fire light party. So these light parties would be uh, two tanks, two ranges, um, 
two melees and two healers. This that's what this like party is because this black fireball would target the black fireball stack will target one healer and one tank. Everyone come to one. We all go to one together. We're gonna do pizza slices one more time. As we saw this time, this was the first one that we're standing on. The second one that came up was the one on our left, and the third one is the safe one. So we're moving into the safe one. As soon as this first piece of slice goes away, we're gonna move into it. <clears throat> and then we're gonna then we do the Elmo strat here. The Elmo strat is that the entire party will stand behind C. As a melee, you can you can push this, you can greet this until this meter is about to get full, and then run behind C. So the entire party stands behind C. One tank will stand near this this tornado here to bait to bait this to bait this uh, AOE. One tank will stand near this tornado to bait this tornado's AOE. The tanks are going to take the two tethers. And then, um, so what's, and then this party, our party will take one, one, uh, one AOE from the bird because what happens is the bird will shoot one, two, the bird shoots three AOEs from his body. Not three AOEs, it shoots three cones from his body, three like cone AOEs. And each, each tornado shoots a cone AOE. And what they do is it, what it do. <laughs> what it does is it shoots a cone AOE that is closest to the to that. It would it, it baits to the person that's closest to it. So whoever's closest to the tornado, it would shoot the AOE towards that person. Whoever's closest to the boss, it would shoot those three AOEs towards that person. If that makes sense. So it it doesn't. It won't make sense. But I promise it makes sense. <laughs> So how we're doing it is we're having um, both both tanks will bait this tornado's cone AOE, this tornado's cone AOE, and, and two of the boss's cone AOEs. And then this party will bait the third boss cone AOE. And then back here behind me, if you can see, like behind my picture, there's a, there's a tornado here. One person will bait this single tornado AOE. So they, they're standing up here, like up here in the corner. If you look at the map. This is where this is where the tornado is at A. The person will stand over here to bait this last AOE because if we get hit by more than one AOE, we will die. So tanks will use their invulnerability here. They're invuln to make sure they don't die. As you see, right before it went off, I ran back to C. As you so so if you can kind of see it. The tanks are baiting all of this damage. <laughs> they're baiting this cone. They're baiting this cone. They baited the tethers. Um, and then this party baited this cone here while, while the last person baited this this tornado here. So right after that happens, we're going to get healed. One tornado will be given this black purple aura, this black purple tether. You want to stand in front of that tether. The group is gonna. The group is gonna stand in front of that tether. We're gonna be baiting tornadoes again. So as I mean, not tornadoes. We're gonna be baiting AOEs. So we're gonna stand in front of the purple tornado. We're gonna stack. The AOEs will come down. We're gonna run around the entire boss clockwise, and then we should end up back in front of this purple tornado. If you're looking at these little squares here, this is kind of how we need to do this. The tank and mate. The tank and range DPS will stack on the left square and the melee and healers will stack on the right square the tornado will push us back into our opposite tornadoes that will dodge the aoe that's that will come out of this tornado and then we either need to do a black fire stack or black fire split <clears throat> i also don't want this video going like way too long so hopefully hopefully i'm going through this okay <laughs> so as we can see here comes the aoe's we're baiting them around the map we're going to keep moving as a group. And then we get back to the fire. Getting a couple extra hits off. And then we're going to stand here. So your melee and your healers will stand here. Your, deep, your tanks and your range will stand on the opposite one. If you saw, we can see that it's a, it's a one big black circle. Also, I have somebody doing callouts too. But it's one big black circle. So this is going to be when the tornado knocks us back. We're going to stay as a group and we're going to stack. and Because we need to absorb this damage. So the tornado snaps us back. We stay here because these tornadoes does a massive AOE. This is why we have to get knocked back because if we don't get knocked back, this AOE will kill us. The safe spot is right here at the inside of the tornado. As you can see, like this little cone right here, this little, this little donut, that's the safe spot. And then since it was one big black fire, we're going to stay stacked. Boom, we absorb that damage. And then there's a, there's a, uh, there's a big AOE coming out. 
if you can clear this part of the fight, you will clear. <laughs> you can you can clear this fight. It, that's the part that kept us stuck for so long. Um, Death Toll is the final mechanic, the final new mechanic. It is the exact same thing where the arrows come on top of your head. Like previous, it's gonna either the arrows either gonna go on top of tanks and healers, or the arrows are gonna go on top of DPS. But instead of pointing them outward. We need to point them inward because everybody needs to get shot. So we're actually gonna point it inward. So so if you have north tether, you're gonna you're gonna stand south. If you have south tether, you're gonna stand north, and you're gonna have all four arrows pointing at the party this time. What happens is each person will get a number, which you can see here. I'll wait till we get a little bit further. Each person will get a number. Um, if you can see that, you can see that, right? Yeah, each person get a number. There's a one, there's a four, and there's a two. You're either going to get a 1, 2, or 4. If you get a 1, that means you need to get shot by one of the AoEs. If you get a 2, that means you need to get shot by two AoEs. If you get a 4, that means you need to get shot by all the AoEs. The easy, it sounds hard, but it's actually really easy. If you have a 1, you will stand behind one of the ads and just eat, just take the shot because of the angle that it shoots. You will stand behind one ad. If you have a 2, you're going to stand in between two ads. That way, both ads will shoot you. And if you, if you have a four, you're going to stand right in the middle. So all four AOEs will blast you in your face. It's a death mechanic. You have to get you have to go down to one HP, but you have to go down to one HP by how many times you need to get hit. So if you only so if you have a one, you only need to get hit once. If you have a two, you need to get hit twice. If you have a four, you need to get hit by all four of them. So once again, as you can see, I have a one. <clears throat> so they come down. The tanks and healers have the have the things on their head. So as you can see, Big is gonna point this arrow inward. Everybody's moving to point them inward because we need to get hit by a certain we need to get hit a certain amount of times. I have a one, so I'm going to stand right behind this one ad. You can pick any ad you want. You're gonna stand right behind that one ad. If you have a two, you're gonna stand like right here. You're gonna stand right here. So that way this one will blast you and this one will blast you, but these two will miss you. So you need to stand out right here or, or right here. I'm trying to make sure you can see it right here in this area. If you're one, you're going to be standing here. If you're a one, you're going to be standing back here, um, back here behind this one, or you're going to be standing over here behind this one. If you're a four, you're going to be right here in the middle of the square and you're just going to eat everything. <laughs> right after that, the the uh, healers have to heal us to full or we'll die. So that, that, but we also have a damage, we also have a damage debuff. So as melee, I don't have it, but as, as melee, um, because we had an astro, astro lotion kind of skips this entire healing mechanic. If you don't have an astro, you're gonna wanna make sure you use mantra, you wanna make sure you use your second wind, and you're gonna wanna make sure you use your bloodbath to help the healers so you can get full to help the healers fill yourself up. So you can see, I'm standing behind this one, I got one, I'm gonna get blasted once. Everybody gets blasted the amount of times they need to. Now it's a healer's check. Astrologian just healed all of us back to full. So we're good. Use your mitigations. Mitigations here are important. Big AOE is coming. <clears throat> now we have our very last, we have our last three mechanics. We are in there at the end of the boss. We're at 12%. It's going to be close. On this double fire mechanic, he always does the big fire. So like the other one, he did the second explosion is important. This one, he always does the big fire. So what happens is if we all stand in the middle, as soon as that big fire comes out, we're going to go to our tank uh, tank range healer melee light parties. And we're going to we're going to go ahead and prep for them because we need to get to the edge. So if it's a big fire, they uh, your, your, your tank and your tank range, gosh, will go north and your healers melee will go south to get to the edge. And since it's since it's the multi explosion this time. It's a spread. So as you can see, as soon as I saw that spread, I immediately started running to the right because the right side of the map is for me. The left side of the map is for the other melee. That's how we kind of explained it here. So I immediately start running to the right. So the middle explosion will happen first and then the spread will happen. Perfect. This timing was almost off. <laughs> I timed this perfectly where my, my actual stack slapped me back here. Um, and I, I dashed just in time. I almost killed big. I didn't, I, if, that, if I was a second off of that dash, <laughs> if I was a second off of that dash, big would have got murdered. <laughs> oh, he goes back to another dive mechanic. This is another stack. 
my <laughs> my partner is dead so i am panicking 100 <laughs> percent panicking right now i use all the willow of went all the willow of earth that i have it doesn't matter only one act one stack actually even matters um my 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 off tank is giving me his mitigations because you need to because it's really hard to survive this with one person with one person you need two people but since it's two fires since it's two heads that means it's a stack my partner's dead so uh, we used all the mitigations on me <laughs> to make sure that I did not die in this mechanic. Do you see that? Do you see that hell? Oh my god! <laughs> so, so I did not die. I did not die. <laughs> the last mechanic is he's gonna split the map again. So we're gonna go northwest one more time. And we decided to go true north. So we're always gonna go between A and A and D. So it's second explosion. So it, since since it hit A first, we're going to go straight. Since it hit the map first, since it hit the area we're going in first, we're going straight in and we're going to go towards A. Stack together. Stay stacked, baby. We're going to stay stacked. We're going to bait these stacks again. We're going to move out the way. There's one last wing mechanic. So there's the wing mechanic. We move to the side. And then now that's it. We go, we go for the clear. A month a month of doing this a month of doing this boss fight <laughs> we finally cleared it <laughs> such a good feel so what happens is he'll do three aoe's and we will wipe um we almost reached we almost reached the three aoe's but we finally did it such a great moment such a great time i hope this video is helpful <laughs> i feel like this video is long because there's so much to talk about uh, but I hope that this gets you through your P3S journey because there there is no better feeling than clearing P3S. <laughs> if you have any questions, hit me up. I stream my I stream my race all all weekend, every weekend. Come through, check it out, and I will see y'all on the next video. Whew, I'm finally free. I'm finally free. <laughs>